How's it going, Giants fans? My name is Alex, and my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo, and it's a beautiful day to talk about Kayvon Thibodeau's dominance in Week 7 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kayvon Thibodeau has just continuously gotten better week in and week out, um, and he's really starting to develop into the player that we really knew he was all along. And of course, that MCL sprain kept him out for a couple of weeks, but he's really starting to just mount that momentum and the success is coming. And he made a huge impact in the, the fourth quarter against Jackson over the closing out that game. And, you know, Anthony and I were just talking about this, actually. We've noticed that he turns up the dial, like he turns it up in the fourth quarter, those, those game-winning drives, those defensive stops. He's been in the mix the last three games, you know, um, against Green Bay, against Chicago, um, against, uh, you know, Baltimore, against Jacksonville. You know, he was kind of there every single game. He, you know, he was in the face of Aaron Rodgers in that third and two with incompletion. He got the strip sack on on uh, on Lamar Jackson. And then he makes some really nice plays and puts a lot of pressure on Trevor Lawrence down the stretch in that fourth quarter. Um, it came up big. And, you know, those incompletions have a lot to do with him. So, so far, incredibly impressed with Kayvon Thibodeau. We have a couple of stats we want to rattle off here before we dive into his pass uh, rushing snaps from week seven. And you guys can see on the film, the guy is fast. His hand fighting is incredible. He's got a hell of a motor. There's a couple of run blocking run, uh, you know, I guess run defending snaps that we're not, that we're not going to show today, but that he chased down guys across the field, 40 yards downfield, chasing down Travis Etienne. It's just incredible. The guy's got some unbelievable speed and some unbelievable tangible traits that he's putting on the football field right now, which is pretty impressive. But Anthony, before we dive into cave on Thibodeau and all the things he's offering this team right now, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, and I'm really excited to talk about Kayvon Thibodeau. Of course, that was such an exciting draft pick when the Giants made it with the fifth overall pick in this year's draft. Kind of came out of nowhere. No one really saw that coming. For some reason, there was a massive smokescreen that the Giants put across the league. All of the analysts were saying, yeah, Kayvon Thibodeau, Giants aren't interested, too big of a personality. Then they just snagged him right over there with the fifth overall pick, and it was just so exciting. And he's just the kind of player that you know is going to be a star. He has that swagger, that superstar mentality, and it's already showing up. I mean, through, you know, five games in his rookie season, he has 14 pressures. He's averaging nearly three pressures a game. He's been dominant during some drives. He had that game winning sack against the Baltimore Ravens. And it seems like he's playing really well and he's only getting started. And that's the really exciting part for me. I think that Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be a very scary player for opposing offenses to face for a long time. And again, it just feels like he's getting started right now. He's getting better week by week, as you just mentioned, Alex. And we've seen so much improvement from that first game versus Dallas where, you know, he wasn't too active as a pass rusher. He made a couple nice plays and run defense and he had, you know, some decent moments here and there but overall as a pass rusher it was a little lackluster but game two against Chicago starts to turn it up game three against Green Bay really starts to get there game four gets his first sack and again against Jacksonville as you just mentioned in that fourth quarter he was wreaking havoc he was getting after uh Trevor Lawrence all game long he had a couple of quarterback hits as well so he's really just improving on a weekly basis and by the season's end I think that we're gonna have a, a bona fide star in gave on Thibodeau already as a rookie and I, I'm just so excited to see how he progresses throughout this rookie season. And again, he's just been such a spark plug to the Giants defense. I feel like since he joined the lineup, you know, of course, missing those first two weeks with the knee injury, ever since he's entered the lineup, it's he's been a difference maker. The Giants were missing him before they had him. And now that he's here, he's made an impact. He's made a difference, whether that be batting down passes in the fourth quarter against Aaron Rodgers to help the Giants win the game or getting the game winning sack against Lamar Jackson or pressuring Trevor Lawrence throughout the fourth quarter. He's making a massive impact. He is a difference maker on the Giants defense defense and it's just been a joy to watch this rookie get to work it really has and some of the numbers i want to read off to you guys are pretty damn impressive so across five games this season for cave on he has 14 total pressures 11 hurries which ranks second among rookies two batted passes which is tied for second among rookies and this is the most impressive one of all 13.9 percent pass rush win rate first among all qualified rookies and you saw trayvon walker against andrew thomas you know he got bullied um, in week seven. So Kayvon Thibodeau up to this point has that forced fumble, a sack as well, the strip sack he had against Baltimore. Um, he's been a very efficient tackler. He's only missed one tackle across five games um, and has one penalty. So overall, very impressed with him so far as a rookie guy coming off of a couple of, you know, injury with MCL sprain. Um, he's been an impact player for this team. So let's take a look at his, his uh, past uh, rushing reps from week seven and really kind of what makes him so exciting. All right. So 
Trevor Lawrence, obviously, here is a very athletic quarterback. You know, he's able to move in the pocket and move around. He was forced to move around a lot because of Kayvon Thibodeau. It was on the right side of your screen here. He lined up in a bunch of different spots during this game. Um, but, you know, we'll kind of watch it through here. We'll stop at the big moments so you can see that his motor, like, he just doesn't stop running, which I really like about him. You know, spinning Cam Robinson around a little bit. You'll see he gets his hands involved. As the, the thing I like about him lies his hands, his hand fighting, and his overall level of play gets better as the game goes on, which a lot of guys may regress as the game goes on. He tends to get better, and it all peaks in the fourth quarter, um, which is something that we've really needed from a pass rusher the last couple seasons. Really nice there. Yeah, and I, I want to touch on the motor that you've mentioned because that's obviously become a talking point on social media right now because he had that clip from this game go viral where he ran down a running back from 25-yard line to other 25-yard line, ran 50 yards in total as a defensive lineman and made the stop on the play. It was a very, very impressive uh, move by Kayvon Thibodeau. He was, his speed rating on Madden, he's petitioning for it to go up on Twitter and it should because the dude was flying. He's like lightning. And that motor is fun to see because that was a question mark for some people coming out of college. They said, does Kayvon Thibodeau have that motor? Does he take plays off? Does he go 100% all the time? What we're seeing on the film, what we've seen on the film for the past few weeks and what we saw on that play, 100% going crazy every single play motors always turned on never taking plays off and that's just something that you love to see especially from a rookie who's trying to become a superstar in this league just to have that motor be that hungry to never take a playoff that's what you want to see from your fifth overall pick in the draft so what i really like about this clip specifically is he uses this false step to get cam robinson to lean forward and extend his arm um you can see right here i'll try to pause it see right here he gives him that false step and look how off that ba off balance cam robinson is he extends that arm because he thinks he's going to get closer to him. He thinks that kevon tibble is going to get a little bit closer so he can get that arm and stab that that uh inside shoulder but instead look at what he does he extends that arm kevon Thibodeau gives him that false step that jab step opens up his entire frame and uses those hands to bat, bat his arms away, and he throws him off balance and runs right by him. And once Kayvon Thibodeau gets by you, like we said before, that motor turns on and you cannot catch him. So you're gonna, you'll are gonna you see that throughout this game. He does a lot of this. He, he really gets Robinson a couple times with this move specifically. Um, so it's pretty impressive uh, to see what he's done. He, he does against Cam, um, you know, who's a pretty solid player by most accounts. Yeah, and, and Kayvon Thibodeau just has such a quick first step, and I love the way that he sets up his pass rushing snaps. Um, he's not always just instantly rushing around the edge or charging the edge. He's very patient, and he likes to be reactionary, which is very good, for, especially for a young rookie uh, defensive lineman to be reactionary, watch what the offensive lineman is doing, and then react to that and make the play. The, the hand fighting, as you mentioned earlier, Alex, is very advanced for a rookie in Kayvon Thibodeau because he does have a lot of counters in his bag. A lot of the times with rookies, you'll see that they kind of just have the ability to make one pass rush move, and that's about it. And that is kind of something we saw with Azizo Jalari last year. He kind of had that one-trick pony vibe, you know, where he had that one trick up his sleeve, that one, one pass rushing move, and he would stick to it. But Kayvon Thibodeau kind of has an array of them. And what he does is he watches what the offensive lineman is doing and reacts to that. So you see he beats Cam Robinson on an inside move there. He saw the way that Cam Robinson, uh, his kick slide went, and so he reacted to that and then went for the inside move. He knows how to attack different offensive linemen based on how the, the rep starts. And I think that's something that you see that tells you he has a very high football IQ and he's very advanced. And the high football IQ is something that even Wink Martindale mentioned and praised last week um, because of that, that win over the Baltimore Ravens after he forced the fumble on Lamar Jackson, he went and tackled Lamar Jackson because he couldn't find the ball, which was something really special. And again, you're seeing it here, the way that he's reacting to offensive linemen, very high football IQ, a very intelligent player in Kayvon Thibodeau. Absolutely. I mean, what I like about what he's doing is he sets up moves early on that he can exploit later, right? Like that's what good pass rushers do. They're not using the same move over and over and over again. They're setting things up for later on in the game. Um, and those inside moves, like you just pointed out, he had been giving Cam Robinson that jab step inside early in the game. And then instead of using that jab step, he just gunned it right up the inside. And Cam Robinson was expecting him to try and jab and then go to the outside and use his speed around the edge. Instead, goes right up the inside. Cardinal Sin for offensive tackles, and he exposes him there, sets him up uh, for a little bit of success. So I really like... You know what I'm seeing here in terms of that's kind of veteran esque. You know, you don't see rookies do that all the time. Um, but I like what I've seen in terms of the effort, the motor. Anybody that said before the season actually started um, was that you know people said, oh, you know, he doesn't have the motors, doesn't have the work ethic, whatever. All nonsense. That is, it's clear as day when watching the film that this guy cares and he's 
he's definitely putting his best foot forward. Um, and he shows up when it matters most too. I mean, look at that, look at that effort right there. I mean, that's a hell yeah, of an effort. He bulldozes that's a clear and obvious hold as well. That was a hold exactly. and that should have been a sack. He would have gotten to the quarterback here if not for this hold. And honestly, yeah. the refs in this game were just, they were pitiful. It was ridiculous. I, I saw this live. Um, I was in the end zone that they were going away from and they were, I had a clear angle of this basically. And I, I was like, hold, hold. And I was throwing, I was like, throw the flag, throw the flag. And the refs just, Walked away. I mean, everyone in my section was pissed off because it was mostly Giants fans. It felt like a home game. It was an awesome time. But this was just clear and obvious. He beat Cam Robinson on this play. The only thing Cam Robinson can do here is hold uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, and he did, and he got away with it, which is BS, and it was very infuriating to witness live. But, again, that quick first step is what sets him up on this play. Cam Robinson has to hold him here because Kayvon Thibodeau instantly won this pass rushing rep with his first step. He is so quick off the line of scrimmage, and it's so noticeable, especially I watched it in person, and it was just insane to see how quick his first step was sometimes. As soon as the ball is snapped, you're like, oh, man, Kayvon Thibodeau, he's already, he's already like three inches from the quarterback. It's so awesome to watch. But, yes, on this play, that is a clear and obvious hold. As you mentioned, Alex, it's a great pass rush and snap, and it really was set up. It really came to fruition because of the setup, how quickly he gets off the line and how he sets up the offensive lineman. It was awesome. He still gets a quarterback hit through the hold. But again, there should have been a call there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, him holding right there. I mean, Trevor Lawrence has to rush this throw right here and it's off target because of it. He impacts that. That's all. And that could be a touchdown if he catches this, you know, um, impactful plays from Kayvon Thibodeau. You're seeing pretty routinely here and it only gets better for him as, as the game goes on. Um, let's take a look at some more of these. He really had his number. I mean, that's gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. The little hand movements right there. Bam. He really, ugh, the chops. He's got, he's yeah. Got and that's Cam exactly Robinson what I was talking cycle. about earlier. It, it's such great reactions. You know, a lot of the times, again, with rookie pass rushers, you'll see them make a move as soon as the play starts and then they're kind of done. But th that's not what this was. He tries to attack that outside shoulder and then he reacts to the offensive lineman, chops those hands away, swims underneath that. Like that's exactly what you want to see the way that he sealed himself off, especially to finish the rep and get around the uh, offensive lineman, get towards the quarterback. Like that's veteran stuff almost. You know, you see veterans in the NFL do that on a routine basis. And now you're seeing a rookie in Kayvon Thibodeau do that on a routine basis. So again, I love the way that he reacts. It's not just a telegraphed play he's going in with a plan to react to the offensive lineman and that's what's creating all these successful pass rushing snaps for him yeah absolutely i mean look at dexter lawrence right there too nice little play there in the screen game that could have been a big play right there for etienne he in in dexter lawrence dexter gets in his face a monster bro monster he's bro a dexter monster. lawrence is a freaking animal oh my goodness i'm so happy we have him locked in for next year too that is such a nice fifth year option pickup by the giants Nice little move there. Oh, gorgeous little dipper on the edge there too. So nice. Oh. Yeah, and you're seeing on a lot of these snaps like that one that we just saw where he's very close. You know, again, a great pass rushing snap here and again, a great counter to get towards the quarterback because there was a second there where he was held up by the offensive lineman, but then he counters and gets towards the quarterback. Some of these plays where he's countering, they're going to start turning into sacks. Like I said, he's only getting better week in and week out. He's only improving. So these plays where we're saying, okay, it's a quarterback hit or it's a quarterback pressure. He got really close there. Give it another week. That's going to be a sack, right? So it's just he's getting better and better each week, and you're seeing this progress, and it's amazing. This play was so infuriating to watch live. I can't even tell you. I thought it was an interception. I thought this game was over. And then this receiver just jumped out of nowhere and made this, made this catch in the fourth quarter. This one was infuriating, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this catch – it, it throw like this should have been the game. This should have been game over. Like right here, this should have been game over uh, on this play, I believe. I mean, Kayvon Thibodeau gets right in Trevor Lawrence's face. The entire defensive yeah. front is right there. This is ridiculous. This should never it's have been a back footed throw into the middle of the field. It's basically a prayer, a hail mary. The guy's blanketed. It's oh such dumb God. luck. It was so hands, infuriating. It's a hell of a catch. I have to say, it's a hell of a catch. Uh, I'm not sure which receiver that was. But it he was, was a hell of a catch, but corner. it's such a bad throw, and I'm so pissed that they got away with that, but whatever, yeah. man. Leo nails Trevor Lawrence. He gets the rough in the call passer there, too. Yeah, that is where they got the rough in, and I disagreed with the call, but <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little biased, so. Of course. Only natural. Oh, he's right there. Again, again, another hold. It's a hold. Like it's just, And he's giving Cam Robinson such trouble that Cam Robinson has to keep grabbing him by the neck and holding him, but he keeps getting away with it. Those refs, man, they were – ridiculously bad over in Jacksonville. But again, another great pass rushing snap. Without the hold, it is a sack. 
and it's probably a strip sack based on the timing mm-hmm. of when he got towards the quarterback. Oh. But, yes, you cannot go like this and choke hold a pass rusher, Cam Robinson. He got away with it far too many times in this game, and it's just infuriating to watch back. But, again, another great pass rushing rep by uh, Kayvon. Look, Thibodeau. against better refs and a less mobile and athletic quarterback, Kayvon Thibodeau has like three or four sacks in this game straight up. It's going to be interesting to see what happens against lesser opponents in the near future here. Like Geno Smith, the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, the the Jaguars actually have a pretty decent pass pro uh, offensive line, which is interesting. Seattle, I imagine, probably doesn't have that good of a pass protection line um, now that they've lost DK Metcalf. And, you know, Kenneth Walker is an absolute beast. But their receiving core obviously just got kind of slashed. I imagine uh, Adore may travel with Tyler Lockett. He kind of moves out of the slot a little bit sometimes. We'll see how they kind of manage that. But Gino's athletic enough. You know, he can move. I'm, I'm curious to see how Kayvon Thibodeau and the Giants manage him and, and, and kind of lock him down and contain him in the pocket. Uh, but I'm excited. This is this is a player who is already showing an impact. And uh, it's going to be fun to see, um, you know, how his development continues to grow here. So it should be exa- very fun. I know, Anthony, you agree with me. And everyone here, obviously, I think is kind of under the same sentiment. So that's definitely uh, optimism for this rookie class, and hopefully Evan Neal can make a return pretty soon from that injury, uh, the MCL sprain. But guys, hope you enjoyed this episode, talking about Kayvon Thibodeau, his success up to this point, some past uh, reps from Week 7 against Jacksonville. Tibosaurus Rex here and present for the good luck charm, as always. Make sure to like and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm-hmm.